HMAS Canberra was the second of two county class cruisers ordered by the Royal Australian Navy as they sought to reorganise their fleet in the aftermath of the post-World War I budget cuts and the Washington Naval Treaty. Built alongside her sister at the Clyde Bank Yards, she was laid down in September 1925, launched at the end of May 1927, and commissioned in early July 1928. Her approximately 10 years of peacetime activity was spent entirely in home waters or close to them. The furthest from Australia she got was serving with the Royal Navy's China Station in the mid-1930s. However, unlike most of her county-class sisters and half-sisters of the early production run, she did not receive the extensive upgrades in armour and anti-aircraft firepower that most did in the late 1930s, possibly because she received a brief refit in 1936, just before the new policies were fully introduced, and so she retained four single 4-inch heavy anti-aircraft guns instead of four twins, and also kept her original box armour instead of a continuous 4.5-inch belt. With the outbreak of war, she was first used to escort Anzac troop convoys and took part in a number of unsuccessful hunts for German Hilfkreuzer that were operating in the South Atlantic and Indian Ocean. However, she did manage to find two of the German surface raiders' supply vessels, the actual supply ship Coburg and a captured tanker that was being used for its oil stores. Both of these ships tried to flee but were then scuttled when it became clear that the supply ship couldn't outrun the cruiser and the tanker couldn't outrun Canberra's Walrus, which was merrily executing a one-aircraft bombing campaign in an attempt to get it to stop. Due to these deployments all being relatively close to home, Canberra was in Sydney when Japan entered the war, and she quickly fell into a pattern of convoy escort with an occasional attempt at offensive operations in waters surrounding the Dutch East Indies. She received a quick refit in spring 1942, which fitted her with surface and air search radar, together with an enhanced light and medium anti-aircraft battery. Coming out of this refit in early summer, she was assigned to Task Force 44 alongside her sister ship Australia, just in time for the start of the Guadalcanal campaign. Deployed to block potential incoming Japanese forces at night, Canberra was part of the Southern Group alongside Australia and the cruiser USS Chicago plus destroyers, when the Australia and Admiral Crutchley in charge of the force were called away to a conference. Later that night, Admiral Makawa showed up with his scratch force and attacked with minimal warning. Canberra did manage to get to action stations courtesy of a sensible crewing system where a sailor's duty and action stations were in close proximity, and she managed to train her guns to port looking for the enemy, as well as evade no less than 19 Japanese torpedoes sent her way. But shells were another matter and with the ship physically positioning itself between the oncoming Japanese ships and the more distant transports, the deluge of Japanese shell fire, unimpeded along most of the ship's length, thanks to the lack of the armour refit mentioned earlier, rapidly overwhelmed the vessel. She was, however, hit by at least one torpedo, which in light of more recent evidence seems to have come about as a result of a friendly fire incident, courtesy of the destroyer USS Bagley. Coming to a halt with fires and shell damage all down her port side, but a distinct list to the unengaged starboard, which happened to be where Bagley was, and largely abandoned by the Chicago, the crew set about making repairs as the Japanese force headed off after the second cruiser group. In the aftermath of the attack, Admiral Turner ordered that Canberra was to be scuttled if she could not get underway by 0630, which left the crew with about three hours to get the ship back online, before Turner intended to commence a general withdrawal. The flooding was brought under control, and she was at little risk of actually sinking, but despite it becoming abundantly clear that the Allied ships were not going to be leaving by dawn, and in fact they wouldn't actually depart until the evening, over 12 hours after the original deadline, Turner seems to either have forgotten about his order to Canberra, or refused to change it. So instead of another 12 hours grace, during which time it's fairly likely the ship could have gotten underway, or at least stabilised herself enough for towing, Canberra was subjected to a hail of gunfire from the destroyers USS Ellet and Selfridge. Over 255-inch shells and four torpedoes from Selfridge later, she was still afloat. So Ellet had to launch her own torpedoes to finally send Canberra to the bottom at 0800 that morning. The combination of an almost certainly unnecessary scuttling and the likely friendly fire incident seems to have prompted a rare occurrence in the US Navy. 
The Baltimore-class heavy cruiser USS Pittsburgh was renamed USS Canberra whilst under construction. She would enter the war the following year and go on to serve until the 1970s. In the Australian Navy itself, the loss of Canberra was compensated by the transfer of HMS Shropshire, although a plan to rename her in the lost ship's honour was cancelled at the news of the US ship's renaming to avoid possible confusion although Shropshire's new crew included many of Canberra's surviving sailors. The wreck of the ship was discovered in 1992, with her guns still trained out towards the enemy. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.